Are you looking to install linear rails on your Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus or Max printer? Well then you've come to the right place. Grab yourself a ticket, come on board, and hold on as we take a trip to Linear Railton. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, choo choo! Were you disappointed when the Neptune 4 Plus and Max were announced? But despite the Pro model having metal guide rails, the Plus and Max had palm wheels, are you plagued by a seemingly never-ending snowstorm of palm wheel dust all over your printer and desk? Or maybe you suffer from a serious case of bedwigilitis, where the eccentric nuts just never seem to be tightened just right? Well, I understand, and I'm familiar with all of your struggles. And that is why today, we're going to go on a four-part adventure together to install linear rails on our Neptune 4 Plus and Max printers. I hope you'll follow along with me on this grand modding adventure. On our adventure, we'll be installing linear rail kits produced by TBS Tron 3D. There's a link to their store in the video's description. As Confucius once said, our journey of four steps will begin by cleaning and preparing the linear rails. Next, we install the x-axis kit followed by the y-axis kit and finishing off our expedition the dangerous and exciting z-axis kit well there are versions of the kits for both the plus and the max printer models in these videos i'll be modifying a neptune 4 max however i'll point out any differences for the plus as we go along for this installation the x-axis and y-axis kits contain the upgraded high wind rails available from tbs tron 3d while the Z-axis kit includes their standard linear rails. Now, before we begin, you might be asking yourself, do I even need linear rails? What do they do? Will they affect print quality? Well, linear rails, often called linear motion guides or linear slides, are ball bearings in a small carriage that moves along a metal rail and provides a host of advantages and benefits. Although for 3D printers, they are often primarily quality of life improvements. The Neptune 4 Plus and Max printers use palm wheels, or hard plastic wheels that roll along sections of extrusion, forming the frame of the printer. While these palm wheels can provide cheap and quiet operation, they gradually wear down from the friction between the wheels and the V-slot of the extrusion. This wear can often be seen as the palm wheels taking on a lighter, fuzzier appearance along with the production of palm wheel dust or the fine black powder that slowly forms on 3D printers that use palm wheels. To make matters worse, if the sides of the palm wheels do not sit flush with the sides of the extrusion, there will be increased wear and the palm wheels will start to change shape. In order for palm wheels to work effectively, they need to work in sets generally of three or four, and apply even pressure on the frame. Sometimes, it can be difficult to properly align all of the palm wheels, causing portions of the printer to be out of square, to not be properly aligned, or to even wobble while traveling along an axis. To align the palm wheels, eccentric nuts are often used to press or tighten the palm wheels against the printer frame. These eccentric nuts have a shape roughly similar to regular hex nuts but the hole in the middle was off center, causing a screw positioned in the eccentric nut to be pushed towards or away from the frame as the nut is rotated. This is what causes the palm wheels to tighten or loosen. However, since the eccentric nuts don't screw into or onto anything, continuing to rotate the eccentric nuts will not continue to tighten the palm wheels. They would just follow a continuous tightening and loosening cycle. As palm wheels wear and change shape, the eccentric nuts will often require retightening, but since an eccentric nut only allows for so much tightening before it starts to loosen again, the eccentric nuts can only be adjusted so many times before your palm wheels need to be replaced. The first step in our journey consists of cleaning and preparing the linear rails. Being a dynamic mechanical part, linear rails require lubrication and proper maintenance to ensure long lasting performance. However, few linear rails, including even high quality rails, come with the required lubrication needed to minimize friction and wear. Instead, 
They are often shipped with a light coating of oil, only suited for rust prevention. There are many reasons for this, but the primary is that the optimal lubricant depends on how the linear rails will be used, what mechanical loads are going to be applied, the velocity of the carriage, and if an automatic or continuous lubrication system will be used. Since there's no way for the manufacturer to know how a particular linear rail will be used, they leave it up to the user to apply the final lubrication. There are many different opinions regarding what lubricant to use. Should you use oil or grease? What viscosity should you use? Etc. But today, we'll be using the recommendation from Hywin, an NLGI-1 lithium grease, specifically Moblix EP-1. This is a general purpose industrial grease frequently used with linear rails and other motion systems. Moblix EP-1 can easily be found online at industrial supply houses, but might not be available at your local hardware store. You don't have to use this particular brand or variety of grease, however. Given the loads and speeds in consumer grade 3D printers, any NLGI 0 through 2 grease can safely be used, provided it doesn't contain any hard additives. However, if you do use a grease that comes in a tube like this, don't leave it on its side for too long because it comes open and it will start to leak out. We found this out the hard way. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does NLGI 1 even mean? Well, the NLGI rating, or more formally the NLGI consistency number, is a standardized classification of a lubricant's relative hardness. The standard was established by the National Lubricating Grease Institute and reproduced in independent ASTM, ASE, and ISO standards. There are nine different grades, or NLGI numbers, in the standard, ranging from 000 to 6, with 000 being the softest and 6 being the hardest. Using a lubricant with the correct NLGI value is important because if grease is too stiff, then the grease might not flow into the areas needing lubrication. But if the grease is too soft, it might leak out of the bearing or wash away if water is present. NLGI 0 through NLGI 2 are often recommended for linear rails used in consumer grade 3D printers. But given the relatively low loads and forces in a 3D printer, any grease within that range should probably work. In our previous videos about installing linear rails in a Neptune 3 Max, we use SuperLube 21030 to lubricate the linear rails. This is also a general purpose grease, but has an NLGI2 classification. While it continues to be working without any issues on our printer, the harder consistency did make applying the grease a little difficult. Also, this particular variety of grease contains syncolon, a form of PTFE. There are mixed opinions about the benefits and drawbacks of PTFE and other additives in the grease used for linear rails. To clean and lubricate the linear rails, we will need a few supplies. First, we will need two twist ties per linear rail. While the linear rails come with stoppers to limit the travel of the carriages, we are going to install the twist ties as a precaution since the stoppers occasionally fall out, allowing the carriages to come off the rails. Next, we need some high concentration IPA or isopropyl alcohol to dissolve any oils and grime that might be in the carriages. This is 99.9%, .9%, but the more common 91% should also work without any issues. A tall plastic container is also needed to form the IPA bath. I recommend wearing a pair of latex or nitro gloves while preparing the rails, since IPA in high concentrations tends to dry out your skin. A lint-free cloth and paper towels will also be needed for wiping down the rails and cleaning up any spills. We will also need the grease discussed earlier in a blunt tip syringe. I suggest getting a syringe set so you will have access to a range of tip sizes. For high wind rails, you will want to use the largest tip that will fit in the lubrication port on the side of the linear rail carriages. Cotton swabs will also be needed to help remove any grease that gets into the linear rail mounting holes. Lastly, since cleaning the linear rails can get a little messy, a mat is also helpful to make cleaning up spills easier. Now that we have all of that boring background stuff out of the way, it's finally time to start cleaning the rails. First, we're going to install zip ties one on each end of each linear rail. Most linear rails come with little black stoppers to prevent the carriage 
from sliding off the ends of the rails. But sometimes they fall out. And if that happens, and the carriage falls on the floor, you're going to have a very difficult time trying to find all those tiny ball bearings, which are guaranteed to go everywhere. To reduce the amount of IPA that's going to be used during cleaning, we're going to put the linear rails back in their bags. However, if yours are missing or damaged, don't worry. You can still follow the cleaning process. You just might need a little more IPA. To clean the linear rails, we're going to fill the plastic bags one at a time with IPA and then place them in a tall container. Since my container is rather lightweight, I'll be using a vise with some wire to prevent the container from falling over. When filling the plastic bags, aim for the IPA level to be about say 3 or 4 inches above the carriages when they're at the bottoms of the rail. Any more and you increase the chance for spills. Now that the bags are filled, we're going to set a timer for 20 minutes and let the carriages soak so any dirt, oils and grime can dissolve every few minutes. Make sure to move the carriages up and down a couple of times to ensure no areas are missed. Now that the 20 minutes is up, we can take the rails out of the bags, pouring the IPA into the tall container. When you remove each rail, rub the rail with a lint-free cloth wet with IPA to remove any dirt or oils that are on the rail, then set aside to dry. Our linear rails are now clean and dry. It's time to apply the lubricant. Let's start with the high wind rails since they have lubrication ports making the job a little easier. Before you begin, make sure the tip of your syringe will fit into the lubrication port. Then, if you haven't done so already, fill your syringe with grease. Take one of the high wind rails and insert the syringe into a lubrication port on the side of a carriage. Start injecting the grease slowly into the carriage. At the same time, very slowly, slide the carriage in the direction of the syringe. This is very important. If you don't slide the carriage, it will be significantly harder to inject the grease. You should see grease starting to come out from the ball bearing channels. Continue injecting grease and sliding the carriage until the grease gets just past the halfway point of the carriage. Now, Switch to the other lubrication port and repeat the same steps. Once the carriage has been lubricated, use paper towels to wipe away any excess grease, moving the carriage back and forth repeatedly to remove as much grease as possible from the carriage and linear rail. Repeat the same steps for the remaining carriages and rails. The final task for today is to apply lubrication to the non high wind rails. Since these rails don't have lubrication ports, we're going to have to apply the grease through the back of the rails. This method is a little messier and requires a bit more cleanup since we're going to need to apply more grease than with the high wind rails. First, remove the tip from the syringe since the mounting holes in the linear rail are significantly larger than the high wind lubrication port openings. Next, Flip over one of the rails so a mounting hole under the carriage is exposed. Pressing the tip of the syringe firmly against the mounting hole, inject grease until you can see it coming out the sides. 
Move the carriage around a bit to spread the grease throughout the carriage. Apply a second amount of grease just in case some areas were missed. Repeat for all remaining non-high wind rails. Now, using paper towels and cotton swabs, clean up all of the excess grease, sliding the carriages back and forth repeatedly to force as much grease out of the carriages as possible. Well, that's it for part one of our journey to Linear Railton. We learned a little bit about how linear rails can benefit a 3D printer, clean the linear rails from our TBS Tron 3D kits, and then properly lubricated them. I really hope you'll join us again for the remaining legs of our grand modding adventure. Before you go, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like this video so you can be the first to learn about our future videos, printer modifications, and enhancements to Bed Leveler 5000. Thanks for watching.